this is Aaron Dominion with the Creation Kit Scripting Series Papyrus Tutorials. I'm re-recording this video for the third part of the Events and Functions segment for Function and Event Parameters because I forgot a portion in the last video and there's a lot of troubleshooting and it's a long video. So watch that video if you want to see how to do some troubleshooting and it can help you because I might say things differently in that video compared to this video, but this video it will cover things in a little bit more uh, detail and it should be clearer. So, what are arguments slash parameters and for functions and events? They are the variables that are required for the event or function to execute. Um, an example concerning functions that I have on here, uh, we have a add health function and current health and add value or cur health add val are the arguments or parameters of this function. And then looking at events instead, we have on trigger event, uh, AK action ref as uh, the parameter slash argument. Um, you've already seen a little bit of this whenever we did like the move to function. We placed uh, the player in there as an argument and things like that. So this is very important because you We'll use them for a lot of Bethesda's functions and such. Uh, so, what they also are, are temporary variables created by the function and event that you can refer to directly while you're in that function and event. Um, when we talked about variable scope in the variable segment of the Papyrus tutorials, uh, we mentioned that uh, the lifespan of the variable, or parameters, excuse me, is only for the current event or function call. So every time you use the function, you will have that variable, but if you want to save it for later use, you will have to put it into a property or a global variable so it can be called. Alright, so here's a portion I didn't cover last time. Uh, what are the valid parameter types? Well, all the valid variable types are valid parameter types. We have integers, we have booleans, we have floats, we have strings, we have objects, uh, and arrays even can be passed into functions and events. Although I don't think there's any events that have been made that require an array. I can be wrong though since I'm not familiar with the script extender. Um, so why use parameters and functions? Uh, for one, Bethesda has a lot of functions that require parameters, and in order to have the operation of like moving a character or uh, changing a character's health, you need to give them the values. Um, another reason why you use parameters, you save on game memory, because the parameters only exist as long as that function or event exists after uh, the function or event has played its course, it will be removed from the game memory, which will save on runtime and memory. Uh, and you can perform complex operations more easily. Uh, Fibonacci uh, is an example. Adding health, as we were seeing. And just You can do all sorts of things. Uh, you can have complex formulas for calculating uh, how much profits you have from a player-owned mine or something like that. Uh, so playing around with functions, because I already did all the coding last time, we're just going to look over the code segment. So let's look at our event cell, just so we know what we're playing with again. We have the Hellskeever there, and we have our barrel. Let's look at this. We have the creature, we have the player, and then we have this death counter, which is an integer property. Uh, so in our event on the net, we uh, assign the player, we assign what death counter is initially, and then we register for update game time. And then uh, we call the uh, function Hellskeever breaks loose that we used in the previous episode, but we've given it a parameter this time, a death count, uh, which we're assigning a temporary variable here, 
that's assigning it the property of the depth counter. This is very inefficient memory wise to do it this way, but during the error checking, I decided to do it that way just so it was clear what we were doing. Uh, so let's look at the function itself since this is where. Uh, actually, let's look at the small function down here at the very bottom. Uh, so I have a set depth counter. Just because we have an integer property, I decided to make a setter for it. Uh, inputs is the new value that you want it, and you set the value. Death counter equals new val. That's all that function does. Alright, so let's look at breaks loose. So you, ah, we need to change the inputs here. Uh, the death count for the Hellskeever. So, we're going to do what we did before and check to see if the skeever is dead. Um, and we want to make sure this uh, hell skeever is only revived two times. So, we assign a temporary variable. We don't really need to do it this way, but this was a part of the error checking I was doing. Let's eliminate what we did here. So, do that, do that, and do that. Alright. So that should be good. So, we set our depth counter to the new value. So, on the first call, it's going to set to 1. On the next call, it's going to set to 2. And then on the next call, it's going to set 3. Um, so we only want it to do it two times, let's say, instead of the three here, just so we can see what's going on. Uh, it will re resurrect it and move it to the player. Um, and here's the base case, because what happens when it's alive? Uh, basically it's just going to move it and summon it. So now that we have this saved, let's go to the creation kit, edit the source, save the puppy, or script, excuse me. <laughs> um, come on, creation kit, there we go. Save it, and then I will see you in game in a moment. Alright, we are in game now. So, as soon as it loads up, I'm going to get the spells so I can kill this faster. And we are going to see our script in action. I think it's time to leave. Takes a little bit of time for it to spawn. This is your first time watching the video. So. Let's see. I guess as good time as any to say if you're lost at what I'm talking about in this video. Look at the other videos for events and functions. Alright, here's the health video. Alright, that's the first time the skeever's been killed. So we're waiting another 0 0.3 uh, seconds. Give us an updated count. Yep. Died one time. Um, we 
could have done this a different way if we attached a script to the Hellskeeper itself for an undeath event. But that would have involved multiple scripts and we're not at the point where we're dealing with multiple scripts and how they interact with each other. Now let's wait again. And the count, whenever the message box comes up, should be two this time. Yep, it is two. And we have to keep it. Actually, spawn in me. Spawns. Barring any other logic errors that might still be there. Uh, the more nested ifs and uh, if branches you have, the more likely it is to have uh, errors. What I mean by if branches like if, uh, else if, and else. And because in the first if there's a nested if, that increases uh, the possibility for logic error. Um, since that's it for the testing portion, I'm going to get out of game and we'll go to the conclusion of this video. And that is it for the parameters video. Um, I will have my form profile and Nexus profile uh, in the description. Also feel free to contact me on YouTube itself. If you have questions about the parameters video or any of the past or future videos, scripting questions in general, uh, requests for special topics or also or feedback on videos in general. Uh, any of those comments are, work, uh, are helpful, excuse me. Uh, feel free to contact me anytime, any day, yada yada. And I will see everybody on the next uh, video.